this is going to be another question and answer video. And the question has to do with, do your rewards and crowns and things like that follow you on after the millennial reign and out into eternity? And the quick answer is, I believe, yes, they do. When it comes to your rewards and your crowns, they're, you know, they're eternal. If you look at 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, it says, Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. So Paul says here that they, the world does things to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. The things that we're going to get at the judgment seat of Christ are eternal. They're forever. 1 Peter 5, 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So the crowns we're going to get are something that's going to stay with you forever. Uh, 1 Corinthians three fourteen says, If any man's work abide, which he hath built their own, he shall receive a reward. And the rewards God, God gives you are permanent. The things that God gives you last forever. It isn't like the treasures of this world. Because what does the Bible say about the treasures of this world? In Matthew six nineteen through 20. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So your rewards and crowns, I believe they'll go on forever. You will, not, you will not only have rewards, but you'll have an inheritance. You'll have an uh, inheritance in the millennial kingdom if you live for the Lord while you're here. Now, if you get crowns, then, you know, you're, it ain't just, it's not that some people are going to get crowns and some people get a millennial inheritance. If you're getting crowns, you're getting a millennial inheritance too. I mean, if you live good enough to get a crown, you live good enough to get a millennial inheritance. But if you don't live for the Lord, you'll still go into the kingdom. However, you won't be reigning over cities. You won't be ruling over anything. So another part of the question was, a Christian who doesn't live for the Lord while he's here in the flesh on this earth, even though he doesn't get to reign over anything in the kingdom, will he stay rewardless? and without an inheritance all throughout eternity? That was another part of the question. Remember now that every born-again believer automatically gets an inheritance. Just automatically. With the moment you get saved. Even if you don't get as much as someone who lives for the Lord, you still get something. In 1 Peter 1, 4 it says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Every born-again believer has something reserved for them. Now, you're not going to get as much in the millennial kingdom. You're not going to be ruling over as much as someone who did live for the Lord. You're not going to get the crowns like someone got who lived for the Lord. But you will have something. And I personally believe every believer will be given reign when it gets to eternity. They may not in the millennial kingdom... But even if they didn't live for the Lord during this life, I don't believe that they'll be held. That's going to be held against them for all eternity. I personally don't believe that. They won't reign them in the millennium. We know that for certain. But eternity is another story. And one reason I believe that personally is because the increase of the Lord's government will have no end, and He will give us reign over parts of these throughout eternity. In uh, Isaiah 9, 7, it says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. And he's going to use us, born-again believers, to uh, reign over certain parts of his kingdom throughout eternity. 
Revelation 22.5 proves that saints will reign throughout eternity. In Revelation 22.5 it says, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Now, even though I don't believe you will suffer from your lack of rewards throughout eternity, you don't want to get in front of Jesus Christ on the throne and not have any crowns to cast at his feet. In Revelation 4, 10 through 11, it says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sit on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You don't want to get to the millennial kingdom and realize that you didn't do any suffering for the Lord. Second Timothy 2.12, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now, if you don't think that born-again believers are going to be reigning during the millennium, Revelation 5.10 proves it. It says, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now, I don't expect to make out so good at the judgment seat of Christ virtually, but I'm going to try to. And I've heard it taught that if you don't live for the Lord, then you'll be found naked in the kingdom, and you'll suffer the shame, and you'll suffer in the sense of, you know, people's going to look at you and they'll know, well, there's a child of God that did not live for the Lord during his life and you'll be found naked just like when jesus hung on the cross and suffered there and was humiliated maybe you'll experience a little bit of that in the millennial kingdom i've heard that taught i mean i'm not i don't know if i necessarily believe that but i you know i don't i don't want to risk risk that i mean you'll still be in your glorified body and and things like that but you know i don't want to risk it and it may be that the less righteous you live for the Lord, the less garments you'll have on. In Revelation 19.8 it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And uh, the preacher Bob Alexander said, The best any of us probably are going to get today is a long t-shirt at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, uh, Saints in this age, just it doesn't seem like we're doing that good. I mean, I don't think I'm going to get anything at the judgment seat of Christ personally. You know, I'm trying. I'm I'm hoping I, I'll I'll get something. You know, and we're all going to get something, as I said before, as that verse says in First Peter one four. That's it says to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. You know that we're going to get something. Not as much as a lot of people, but we're going to get something. We're all going to get something. But I personally, to answer the question, your rewards and your crowns will follow you out into eternity. You will reign all the way out into eternity. It's not just that 1,000 years that you'll reign. You'll reign all the way out through eternity. Your crowns, you'll have that crown with you throughout eternity. And... Um, in the sense of your lack of service for the Lord, your lack of rewards, I, I personally believe throughout eternity that, you know, that lack of service will not be counted against you throughout eternity. That's my personal opinion. Uh, I, I don't know that it's made that clear in the Bible about that topic. If it is, somebody let me know, but I personally, I, I don't see where it's made clear on that, but... Like I said, it says the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. I believe that uh, it's going to go back to the way God originally planned it, where you're going to have people in natural bodies, kind of like Adam and Eve, who are going to, you know, populate the the universe, the planets. And uh, we're going to reign over those. You know, I don't believe that God's going to have you go throughout all eternity suffering because of your lack of service that you had in this life. And also it says, you know, he, he said there'd be no, no more sorrow, 
nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. The former things are passed away. Let's go to that verse where it says the former things are passed away. In Revelation 21, 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So I believe, personally, that you are not going to suffer for a loss of rewards throughout eternity. I believe that's just for the 1,000 years. And I believe that it that's as clear as we can get on that issue. You know, if somebody's got something else on that, you know, put it in the comments or something. But to answer the question, your your works or lack thereof, you, you know, you're going to get crowns if you do good works. The crowns, the rewards, they'll follow you forever. But I personally don't believe your lack of service will follow you forever. And you say, well, that's not fair. Well, you know, it's not fair that we get to go to heaven. You know, it's, there's a lot of things that's, you know, may not seem right to us, but that's just the way God's going to do it. But I hope this answers the question. And feel free to ask any more questions. Send it to the email, hensleybiblebeliever at gmail.com. I've got it in the description if you need to read it. Uh, just send the question of that email if you have a question.